Happy New Comic Book Day, Geminites. It's your boy, Gem Mint. We're going to do the New Comic Book Day reviews, spoiler-free, so stay tuned. All right, guys, before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the bell so you're notified every time we release new videos. We do drop daily content, and we're creeping toward our 50K subscriber giveaway. We're going to give away an XM Studio Spider-Man statue worldwide, so uh, make sure you're subscribed for when we drop that video. Before we get started with the new books, uh, I did miss Dead Eyes number four from Image Comics last week. Jerry Dugan killing this run. I really love Dead Eyes. I thought this was a great issue. A uh, nice little heist. Our, our guy Dead Eyes does some slick maneuvering to try to find money that's hidden within a wall. Uh, and it's just a great overall issue. I was a little bit worried because I heard this was the last issue, but it looks like they're you know teasing the next arc at the end of the book. So we should get more of Dead Eyes from Image. All right, Jeff Lemire over here with Family Tree, issue number three, another Image title. Jeff Lemire can do no wrong. I really like this title as well. We're finding out that our main character, Megan, Maggie, like my daughter, Maggie, she's turning into a tree, but we're finding out that might not be the end of everything for her. So there's kind of a whole other tree thing going on here, and uh, it's getting kind of interesting. So Jeff Lemire always likes to mess with our heads. I'm digging Family Tree. All right, the last title from Image is Heart Attack Issue 3 by Sean Kittleston. I'm not really loving this issue. It got super political at the end as well. But, you know, it's this whole notion of, like, you know, not mutants, but they're variants, and we're in the future, and there's these checkpoints and curfews, and kind of getting a little boring. I think the characters are written kind of funky, like the main character, the, the female, I can't remember her name. Like, are they teenagers, or are they adults? I don't know, I can't really tell. But, um, I don't know, I might start passing on Heart Attack. Alright, jumping over to Valiant, we have Colin Bunn's Roku uh, issue 4. This is the last issue for the 4-issue miniseries. Really, this is just a love letter to the Roku character. She's just such a badass character. Uh, telekinesis, symbiote type of hair, uh, an incredibly graphic and violent comic. I mean, you don't really have much going on in terms of story. She's basically trying to save this asset, which is this little girl who's a weapon. And um, it looks like we're going to get more of Roku after this, but this little miniseries is done. But I was digging it, man. I'm, I'm a real big fan of the character. Jumping over to DC, we'll jump into the DC Black Label, the Hill House comic stuff. Joe Hill's Basketful of Heads issue 4. I'm digging this, man. It's got a little bit of a horror aspect to it, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. Our character is kind of figuring out <laughs> what's the deal with this axe and these severed heads. And it's, it's getting a little bit comical. But I think it's still an enjoyable read, so I'm I'm still I'm staking it out with basket full of heads. I'd like to see where it's gonna go once um, we develop some more in, in the story. But uh, it's cool so far. All right, Batman eighty seven. This is the second issue from uh, James Tinian, and I gotta be honest, I, I'm a little bit lost. I don't really understand what's going on here. It seems like they're playing with this theme of. People having a grand design for Gotham. Bruce Wayne has one. But I guess what they're trying to show us is that the villains have one. You have a very twisted look at Penguin and Riddler here. And it looks like they have their own design. And then we have these five mercs who have been captured. Uh, Deathstroke is one of them. But where is this really going? I mean, I'm a little bit lost, man. You guys got to help me out in the comments. Batman Curse of the White Knight, issue six, though, uh, bouncing over back to Black Label. This was an incredible issue, man. I think the relationship between Harley Quinn, Jack Napier, slash Joker is incredible. I really like the Azrael stuff, the battle between Azrael, uh, Azbat, and uh, Batman was, was dope. They're playing with the history of, with, of Gotham a little bit with the Waynes, and I forget the name of... Uh, the Azrael family, but they're kind of going back and forth with like, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy from the past kind of thing, but it was still a good issue, this was volume six, right, what is there, eight issues in this, it was a dope book though, so Batman Superman six, I feel like I'm getting a little lost here, and I'm missing out, because I stopped picking up all those uh, infected one shots, and year of the villain one shots, there's like three different books that it references in this book, and I, I haven't been reading any of the other ones, also, I feel like, did I miss issue 5 somewhere? I don't know, but I, I wonder if this title will continue past the Batman Who Laughs stuff and the whole infected stuff and become its own thing because I'm down for a Batman Superman title, but I'm so over the infected stuff. It's like not even funny with the Batman Who Laughs, like all right already. 
But um, the concept here is that you know Batman and Superman were hiding the Batman who laughs from all of the Justice League, and it seems like by hiding stuff, they're becoming more like Batman who laughs, and they need to try to like be a little bit more transparent. Basically, another route with their approach to the, to these villains. So um, I guess that's what we're gonna see moving forward. Maybe the title picks up, but right now I, I'm feeling like. There's too much going on in other books for me on this one. Metal Men number four. <laughs> I continue to be entertained by this issue and this run. You know, every time I look at it in my pull, I'm like, oh, Metal Men, I got to read. And then I'm, oh, I always enjoy it. So this is a fun little 12 issue miniseries. Um, we have the Ninth Metal Man kind of doing what the professor couldn't do. His whole goal in life was to create these artificial robots out of these metals and give them life and sentient life and give them a soul and he can never do it but it looks like he's being outclassed i'm a little bit skeptical on if that's actually the case but that's what it seems to be uh we have robot con in here it's like a comic con so i find it kind of weird when they imitate real life in comics but basically <laughs> two of the metal men have booths at a con and they're doing signings and stuff and uh, a fight breaks out it's pretty fun but yeah, it's just a fun run, man. I'm digging Metal Men. All right, jumping over to Marvel, we have the Al Ewing Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Marvel sent us an early look at this book, so thank you very much, Marvel. Uh, they also sent us another book, but we can't talk about it yet. It's for next week. So um, this is a new start for Guardians of the Galaxy. This is after the Donny Cates saga, after the Church of Universal Truth saga, the Death of Rocket saga, right? So everybody's chilled and calmed down. And they're just able to be a family and be together. But they got that itch, man. Can they actually do it? I mean, we have a new villain, a new evil that's kind of appearing with these kind of Greek gods. You have Zeus and this floating city kind of thing happening. We get a tease from a different type of god at the end of this, and it ain't Thor. So, uh, I don't know. It, it seems like a fun run. Uh, I think it was. it felt like an oversized type of issue. And I think they had a lot. They had, like... That whole kind of calming beginning with the family vibe, which was not boring. It was it was good. And then it gets really action-packed, and you kind of are racing through the pages, and then you get a cool kind of reveal at the end. So I think overall was a really solid issue, man. Um, Ewing, re uh, really strong uh, for the first arc of Immortal Hulk, and, and a lot of people still dig Immortal Hulk. So uh, interesting to see him pick up a new title. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep up with it. Back to Jerry Dugan. He's doing Dead Eyes. And then we got him on Marauders for issue 6. Continuing the continuing the Dawn of X. This was an action-packed issue. I think it was very close to Marauders 1. Which was a lot of people's favorite issue from the Dawn of X. Uh, Kate Bishop is a total badass, man. I really like her character. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to spoil this. But the end. What the hell is going to happen, man? I don't know. We, we, we got to see what's up, man. We know Kate can't go through portals, right? So... I don't know what's going to happen with this here. Kind of a good explanation as to why these mutants seem to be surrounding Kate as well. It's really hard to talk about this one without spoilers, but just know it was action-packed, dope fight scenes, Storm, Iceman, Kate Bishop, that Black King, man, Sebastian Saul. He's so smug. Marauders is dope. Excalibur 6, I really dug this issue. I thought this had a lot going on for it. You had Braddock versus Braddock for uh, control of the king of... Uh, other world or whatever it's called you have a badass rogue if you guys remember slight spoilers but from the last issue she absorbed the powers of apocalypse so she's flying around doing a lot of badassery um the the interaction between apocalypse here i really like his connection with the mutants i think it works really well man and i thought that this was uh, a very fun entertaining issue apocalypse working with jubilee and with her son shogo like it was just really good all around. The artwork was great. A lot of colorfuls, a lot of purples and, and blues and stuff. It looked really good, man. All right, Ruins of Ravencroft. This is the Dracula one-shot. This is a, a Cap Dracula story. I'm really digging these Ravencroft issues. I kind of like them better than all of Absolute Carnage. Definitely likes it. I liked it better than the 2099 uh, event or whatever you want to call it, this story arc. But it's fun. It starts off, you know, we have uh, Luke Cage and Misty Knight and... Iron Fist with uh, Falcon and Mr. Fantastic. They're searching the ruins of Ravencroft and kind of stumbling on stories of the past. It goes into a past story with Captain America versus Dracula. And it's funny, like, Cap and Bucky felt very much like Batman and Robin, like, 60s styles in, in this book. 
I, I don't know why it made me think of that. I think the way the Bucky's dialogue, and he just felt like very like very much like that Robin, like holy jillipers, Batman. But um, it was a dope issue, and this is all leading into something that I I don't know if it's if I could talk about it or not, but. Go to the last page. See what comes out next after this. I've actually already read it. And um, I'm digging it, man. I definitely uh, like the Ravencroft stuff. All right, guys. This is the last book. And I'm going to just give it a default pick of the week. Um, I didn't really have a pick of the week. I think Dead Eyes was my favorite. But it was from last week. But Zach Thompson's uh, The Good Son. And this ain't Macaulay Culkin. This was more of my alley. I'm like a 90s Spider-Man guy. And, and here you have little Normie Osborne with Dylan Brock. They're living with Harry and Liz Osborne. This is after Absolute Carnage. And um, I don't want to really want to give spoilers on Absolute Carnage, but Dylan Brock's got a little bit of a secret. Normie knows about it. But Dylan is like a total asshole in this book. And I wanted to complain. I wanted to say, like, it doesn't feel like any of the Dylan Brock that we've ever seen. But reading the story, I think that's kind of the point, right? So if, if you read this book which I, I think you should. If you've read Absolute Carnage, if you're reading the current Venom run, this is a must-read that ties into that. There's a reason why Dylan's acting like an asshole. I don't really like it, but I'm sure it's going to get resolved. we got to get Eddie back off that island, fix the Venom symbiote, and get your son. Get your son, man. All right, guys, those are the new comic book day reviews for today, Wednesday, January 22nd. Let me know what was your pick of the week in the comments below and what you thought about the reviews. Make sure to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Hit the bell so you're notified when I release new videos. We are so close. We just hit 47,000 subscribers today and we got there pretty quickly. Uh, so we're going to hit that 50,000 and I don't want you to miss the giveaway video where I give you the details on how you enter to win that Spider-Man statue. So uh, make sure you sub it up, notifications, all that good stuff, and stay minty fresh. Peace.